So out of the box or out of the way, whatever you want to call it, we have, I would have picked this up and shown it to you because it was a big set. But like I said, I sold it. I'm trying to get rid of all my anime. Hands out, picture right here, When They Cry, the complete series. This is a Japanese anime about kids in a village. But what is in this village? Let's find out. <laughs> Chase Lee Hockey here with the Blue Futon reviewing When They Cry. What's this about? I'm not going to say it's a simple premise. This is three seasons. The third season has nothing to do with the first two seasons. But this is about a small village in Japan and there's a curse, right? And if each person or child or adult leaves this town like within 48, 72 hours, a curse comes along and they're murderous. They don't care. They will murder anyone or anyone near them. And with this first season, you get these different storylines of these kids. I won't lie. I was so damn confused because all of a sudden you're following the first kid, which is the boy, right? And all of a sudden he's beating these girls with a bat. You're like, what the fuck is going on? And it ends. And it's like six episodes, right? Then the next one follows someone else. And then the guy's alive. And these kids are still alive that he beat with the baseball bat. And you're thinking, what is going on here? I didn't read the manga. I'm just a Westerner not understanding what the hell is happening. And so, I was like, I gotta stick through it. Stick through it. I'm like, okay. Okay, now it's a new storyline. Okay, it's a new storyline. Okay, a new storyline. What is actually occurring here? So then at the end of season one, they slowly start bringing about this curse and this one little girl. And you're thinking, wait a minute, what is happening? Oh, that is what happening. There's multiple worlds and universes. And she has to go through each universe to find the right one where they all survive. And you're like, oh, interesting premise. But wouldn't you please tell me beforehand? All right, anyway, after you get out of the way, season two dives way deeper into that premise where you're following this girl and she thinks she found the right universe. She thinks she's got enough, you know, snippets of each universe to tie, kind of tie into this one and to get everyone to survive. But then something crazy happens in one of the end episodes with a truck and a bike and you're like, oh, snap. And it could have gone something so much cooler, but they decided to go kind of like on the downhill. And I'm like, okay, that's still fine. They needed a happy ending. Season 3, on the other hand, is this a sexual, perverted fantasy of four episodes about swimsuits, about kissing, about adults and little kids? It was fucking weird. Okay. Season 3, horrendous. Absolutely god-awful. I don't want to say it's awful, but it just was really not necessary through and throughout. So when talking about this anime, though, it's very intriguing. Like I said, I usually don't buy anime unless I know it's going to be bloody gory and just off the wall fucking bombastic here there is some bombastic moments but it's not as bombastic as you think it is it's a lot of time traveling it's a lot of different universes it's a lot of trying to understand who these kids are and what they're willing to do during the curse because when it does have like when they do talk about the first season and these different kids and what they do yes there's one torture chamber scene with the twins that's grotesque I mean, off the wall is bonkers. And I'm one of the cynical people where I see all these animes like One Piece, which I don't ever going to watch that Dragon Ball Z game. Um, live action remakes. Could like this one get a live action remake? Probably not. But I think it would be pretty interesting. Yes, kids doing fucked up shit to other kids might not, you know, be kosher. But I think it's something that would be interesting enough. Like I saw, it was a Blue Lagoon. That would be a fun one. As Quentin Tarantino asked, would be like, oh, it's too racist. Nah, I don't care. I think it is just funny enough where it's also making fun of other people. And just the whole reasoning is freaking funny. Uh, so overall, the animation's good. The voice acting's good. However, if you buy the DVD set, only season one, you could do subtitles or dubbed. Season two and three are not dubbed, so you only get the subtitles. So just a fair warning with that for the American audience. But this is an interesting enough show that it goes, okay, 
but you have to stick with it to really understand what this show is because if you're not sticking with it, this is going to be so damn confusing. And you're going to be like, what is the whole point? And there are weird sexual innuendos that do seem very uncomfortable throughout. So when they cry, we'll receive a three and a half out of five with futons, which equals that 70%. So let's see the correct news scores gave this one. If I remember this correctly, I couldn't find anything the first time. And re-looking at it, I think all three seasons, there is no information whatsoever. I guess the first one, you do get a positive from 2020, and that is a random guy. Uh, but when you go to season two, you get nothing. And then season three, you get nothing. And they came out in 20, 2006, 2007, and 2009. And it looks like they are stopping it from there on out. So you get my 70% for the whole series. Season 1 through 3. Chase Lee Hockey, you're the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. One of the things, Blue Topia. You Blue Tony, you're saying you're Have a great day. I don't care about to take tomorrow, week from a month or a year from now. I'm a freak of one of you. And again, I'm sorry that I sold it and deleted the footage.